You're listening to Got Tech, the podcast with your hosts, Eric Geis and Nick Johnson. Today's special guest is teacher Josh Holland, whose band The Retroglyphs supplied the music for today's episode. In this episode of Got Tech the Podcast, Josh Holland stops by to talk about EdTech apps that help motivate unmotivated students. Nick and I go over Flipgrid being acquired by Microsoft and what that entails. We go over some summer professional development that you can do for free. Finally, we close it up with another tech battle royale. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Got Tech, the podcast. Today, we have a special guest here to help us talk about unmotivated students and the role that ed tech can play in that sort of classroom environment. Our guest is an English teacher in his second year here at Hopewell Valley Central High School, where Geis and I both teach. Uh, He teaches an Atlas program, a four-year English course geared towards assisting unmotivated students with a smaller classroom environment. Uh, This classroom emphasizes engagement through blended learning. That's one of our main things, so that should be extra helpful to talk about. Character education education, community projects, and so forth. He is a 2007 graduate of Del Rand High School and a 2011 graduate of the College of New Jersey, currently in his sixth year of teaching. Aside from teaching, he's also passionate about music, playing drums for the 80s-inspired synthwave band The Retroglyphs, who, side note, have provided to us all of the music for today's episode, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, So thanks, Josh, for allowing us to use your band's stuff, and I think we'll probably just get started by asking you to describe a little bit what the Atlas program is here at Central High School so people get a sense of the population you're dealing with and and the types of things you can do uh, for them. Sure. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, The Atlas program here at the high school is uh, stands for Achieving Through Learning and Success. Uh, It was formerly known as the RISE program, which uh, was before my time. I honestly don't know what that used to stand for. Yeah, that's a good Um, point. I'm not sure what that was. Yeah, but the uh, the Atlas program has been rebranded the last couple years since I've been here, um, switching from what used to be an English class back in the day to a history class and now back to English. Essentially just a classroom for students who, as you said, are unmotivated, um, could benefit from having a classroom that's a little bit more engaging, a classroom that where they don't feel like they're sort of of a loss in the mix of like a, you know, regular, say 25 classroom, uh, 25 student classroom. But uh, yeah, it's it's been really great because when I first came here, people had kind of like given me a heads up saying like, you're going to have some of the more like tougher students in the school, but I'm coming from Willingboro High School, where uh, it's a district with like a lot more, I guess, overall problems than we have here at Hopewell. Um, And it's been nice to have a place that's a lot calmer and conducive to learning. Okay. Um, So even though I have the challenging students, I've been able to develop a pretty nice rapport with them. That's awesome. Uh, So smaller class sizes uh, is definitely a difference. Uh, I know back to the rise program because i am a little bit older (laughs) a little bit yeah you've been around for the rise program (laughs) and the atlas program now (laughs) yeah so i could i could tell you that down there and when i say down there it's really over there well it's down for us because of the way our hallways are set up for people that don't know what we're talking about the lower numbered classrooms that's there you go so down is the number but they do a good job down there i i often go down there just to visit just so i could get away from my wing a little bit the kids are always down there doing something fun when you look in i what i really want to get into is more the technology aspect how how can educational technology ed tech help unmotivated students in the classroom and what are some of the strategies that you use in your classroom to help these students yeah i mean i think we can all agree that Students just in general now consume technology at an incredible rate. Um, even your most high achieving student is probably addicted to their cell phone and they just maybe have better skills when it comes to like ignoring them in the classroom. Yeah, sure. Um, so, I mean, a lot of my students have that pitfall where they're constantly checking their phone and, you know, even with us having the one-on-one with the Chromebooks, uh, that opens up like, like a whole new 
temptation for them. I know the school and a lot of schools are starting to crack down on like as far as the network itself, like what sites can be accessed and stuff like that. Um, but I've been able to make pretty good use of a few apps um, such as like Prezi. Uh, I've used Classcraft, which is the one I wanted to like, I guess, focus most on. Um, this sort of rules everything we do in the classroom in terms of like reward and even punishments um, in terms of student behavior. It's really a great classroom management tool, but one that like not too many people know about. So I would definitely recommend just like checking it out because there is a, a free version. Uh, I personally pay for the premium version, <laughs> which I guess is like one of the issues with, with tech for you guys too. Like I'm sure you've experienced roadblocks where you find something that's really cool and you get the free version and then there's like the premium version where things get a little, you step up the game a lot, but you also have to yeah. shell out the money. Yeah, well, we we talk all the time. You got to sort of pick and choose the ones that are the best that really work the most for you. And, and usually you're willing to pay for, mm -hmm. for those if, if they're good enough. Yeah, yeah. And Classcraft is definitely one of the ones where I was like, yeah, you know, these new features are definitely worth it because yeah. um, you can unlock. Essentially, uh, students create a, a, an avatar sort of character, like kind of like a medieval sort of theme where they can be uh, like a warrior. They can be a mage or a healer. Okay. And they have different like abilities that they can unlock. So the students like to try to customize their character by accumulating points that I can give out for you know academic reasons or just behavior. Someone did really great in class, and everything is customizable. Like every single aspect of the game, pretty much in terms of like what can give them points, what can have them uh, have their points taken away. With the premium version, like there's a lot of outfits and stuff that they can customize too, which I didn't expect to be like super motivating for them. <laughs> but like they like constantly like every day they're reminding me to to log into classcraft and do like something that's called the wheel of destiny where it's just like a <laughs> random kind of like the wheel <laughs> of destiny <laughs> yeah so i mean there's certain aspects of it that's that cool. you know i like because I'm into video games and stuff and you know that I was like oh this is really neat you know like I can kind of you know gamify my classroom it was my first attempt at doing that but at the same time I was kind of nervous that like the students would think it was really corny because it's you know you can't really control your character or like move yeah. them around or anything or fight anybody right but it is just a really cool uh, classroom management system that's um, awesome there's there's even like other apps built into it there's like a, a volume meter that you can turn on like if you're trying to keep your class quiet during a test and if they can keep quiet they get rewarded with points there's a there there are bo boss battles which are a new thing which is essentially like a kahoot but you're fighting like some kind of monster and your uh your whole class is like teaming up against the monster to try to beat them and each mm. question they get right that's like, really cool that sounds that's awesome. take away like hit points and stuff they need to bring this in with the old mike tyson's punch app yeah. I, uh. I i think <laughs> if i had a smart peer group of kids with me <laughs> Yep, I could finally beat Mike Tyson. It's po it sounds possible. I think yeah. I've been playing that Power for thirty teamwork. years, and I haven't <laughs> beat Mike Tyson. No, nobody ever did. Nobody ever has. <laughs> I mean, is he beatable? I don't think so. I don't think so. I want to put Josh on the hot seat real quick. We're gonna fire away different educational assignments, assessments, and things like that, and all it requires from you is a yes or no answer. Okay. So we're going to say something out and you're going to basically say whether, yes, you could put points to it through this app or no, you can't. Okay. Sure. Nick, do you understand? Yeah, I get it. He, he looks at me weird and this is like a constant thing. We sit across the table from each other and he's making <laughs> faces at me. I yeah. have no clue what it means. I just yeah. try to confuse him. That's all. <laughs> Mission accomplished. All right. Let's go homework. Yes. Behavior modification. Yes. Tests. Yes. Quizzes. Yes. Let's see here. Projects. Yes. Of any kind. Yeah, pretty much. You can modify it. Essays. Hmm. I could grade them myself and put the points into the thing, so yes. Oh, you almost had them there. That was close. All right, let's go to the last one here. Cell phone usage. Yes. Yeah, that's a big one as far as the punitive stuff i have a more important question is the as the teacher are you allowed to make an avatar for yourself like can you be like the big boss of the whole thing and get involved well can it's you, it's interesting that you bring that up because that's like probably my biggest complaint with the game is ah, that okay. you cannot oh um, that'd be so cool you are called the game master but you have no <laughs> you know you have no avatar so it's it's sort of like i don't know it's not fair when the because the kids show off they're like yeah i decked out my character right and some of them look like really awesome and i'm just like i'm like just invisible i guess but it sounds like your kids actually they got into it did that take any extra effort on your part or was it a natural thing that just kind of happened yeah i mean they have a lot of resources on the site like for uh, videos you can play um, okay. that sort of demonstrate the first day or the first week and like a lot of 
even professional development opportunities for teachers where they can do webinars and, you know, even chat with people that are involved with the program. But yeah, I guess it just came down to like my own enthusiasm and just yeah. kind of selling them on it. You know, as teachers are always doing that with stuff, you know, if you can make it seem that way, it goes a long way. I'm going to tell you what, I'm, I'm interested in this class craft a lot. I love gamification. So class craft, we're going to tag you in this episode and we love what you're doing. We think it's awesome. So uh, just make sure that you uh, really take into consideration Josh's uh, suggestion of getting a avatar for the teacher. I think it would be super awesome. You guys rock. And uh, Josh, thanks for coming out today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You can follow Got Tech outside the podcast at gottech.com or on Twitter at Geist Got Tech and Nick Got Tech. Big news out there in educator land. Flipgrid and Microsoft partner up. So, wow. That's all I have to say right now as well. Wow. Really exciting. Yeah, that's that's crazy because Google has been such a huge, I mean, Google has, that's what most educators are using now uh, to sort of tie in the ed tech into their classroom. So this is, this is really a big change for Microsoft. And with the release of Microsoft Surface Pro, is Microsoft becoming more relevant in educator land? Well, I think there's kind of been this explosion of ed tech out there uh, and Google's been behind most of that. And I think there's probably a lot of money in that. And Microsoft is seeing that and trying to get into the game a little bit themselves. So with the, uh, did uh, how did, how exactly did this go down? Did you get all the details? Like did Flip, Flipgrid was bought by Microsoft, correct? Correct. They, uh, they announced their partnership and they announced that Microsoft was acquiring Flipgrid. Okay. Flipgrid is an educational monster. I always thought Flipgrid would actually go over to the Google platform in some way, shape, or form. Right. And they kind of did. I mean, they all work well together. Because they were, Flipgrid is their own entity. They, they're, at least they were not associated with Google prior to this. No, but they played nice with right. everyone, which is kind of huge in the educational realm right now. Yeah. If you play nice with everyone, you can become more popular because you're not eliminating your audience. If you're a Chromebook district, you could use Flipgrid. If you're an Apple district, you could use Flipgrid. If so should we uh, should we recap for everyone really quick what Flipgrid is, just in case there's some people totally new to the whole subject? Yeah, go for it. So for the people that don't know, Flipgrid, um, it's an online community uh, where a teacher logs in, you create a classroom, you register all your students just like normal, um, and you create what they call a grid. And that grid is can be used a bunch of ways. That can be your classroom. Some teachers refer to it as a community. But pretty much within that grid, you create a topic, um, and you can post videos there. Um, but once you create the topic or two, that sparks a class discussion. Really, it's a it's a digital classroom discussions. And uh, once you post that topic to the grid, then your students share their responses, typically in short videos that they create of themselves. That's the, probably the simplest way to describe it. And it's just, it's really one of the, uh, I'm not sure the best word, but it's one of like the flagship ed tech things out there for teachers right now, because it's so easy and it just works really well. So the good thing is that with the Microsoft purchase, Flipgrid is supposed to be totally free for education. And, and that's big because prior to this, you would get one grid. You would get one grid. You could do whatever you want with that one grid. But once yeah. that one grid is used, that, that was your free service. Now, all the resources are free. All the grids. You can make as many grids as you want. That's huge. A product like this going out there for free is unbelievable, especially when you see certain uh, platforms now become, you know, subscription based like Padlet. Yeah. Padlet just became subscription based and then couple weeks later we have flipgrid for free huge well we just talked about this in a recent episode is that when these when these programs get really popular when they get really big because they're good that's when they sort of tend to switch over to the subscription base where you have to pay a fee which is sort of a bummer as a teacher because then you're counting on your school to hopefully pay for you or paying out of pocket um, which is not good but also those tend to be the better programs so flipgrid is one of the best most popular things out there to be free is pretty exciting and pretty big news. I also read that they will actually be, for schools that already have paid for subscriptions, they're going to pay you back. They're going to prorate like a refund to those teachers in those schools. So that's pretty cool too. Those schools have to be thrilled because now they're able to go out and get some other subscription-based right. ed tech tool with that money that they're going to be able to bring in and probably pair up with Flipgrid, maybe integrate it, maybe a Canva. 
Right. You know, something like that. We, we got to talk about this. I mean, me, I was concerned. My concern was if Microsoft bought Flipgrid, yeah. am I still going to be able to use it with my one-to-one Chromebook subscription or initiative at school? Are we going to be able to use it? The answer? Yes. Flipgrid is going to continue to run and perform on Chromebooks, iPads, iPhones, PCs, Android devices, and so on. Yeah. I wonder for how long they're going to keep that going, though. If they're trying to, if Microsoft is trying to edge their way in, maybe they try and squeeze out Google eventually. Are all us uh, Chromebook users going to get kind of uh, left up in the air a little bit with how we're going to integrate this, I wonder? I I think we're just going to have to wait and see. I, yeah. I mean, the other thing that we got to talk about is Flipgrid support team is phenomenal. You hear all this Flipgrid fever, all these professional developments. They have conferences out there hosted by Flipgrid for Flipgrid activities and professional development. So with this, will Flipgrid, Team Flipgrid, still be around? Right. Or is it going to be taken over by Microsoft? I think they'll probably keep doing that stuff. I mean, Microsoft is a, is a big company, uh, so they'll probably keep up most of that stuff, in my opinion. I, I was just reading, though, that they're trying to make Flipgrid integrate with more Microsoft products. There's They have a, teams for chatting with people online. They're trying to make it integrate with that. Also, Microsoft OneNote, they're trying to make it integrate with that, which that sounds a little bit concerning to me because on the Google platform stuff, I never use OneNote at all. I couldn't really even tell you exactly what Microsoft OneNote is for. So that sounds a little bit concerning. Um, maybe making it sound like they may want to switch over to that kind of thing in the future. I mean, it all depends on what Microsoft wants to do with it. I know talking to some of the Flipgrid people that go out and do some of these professional developments, and I've only been to one session at one conference right. on Flipgrid, and they had me sold there. I hope the enthusiasm stays along what's best for education, and that would be just to keep it compatible with everybody. Yeah. I mean, that that's my hope. That's my dream. But I have to give a big shout out to Microsoft. Thank you for the free Flipgrid service. I mean, this is huge. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah, for now, free is good. And just, I mean, to put it into perspective, Microsoft wants people to use it more than anything else. They just need the users to stay. F- being free is a huge part of that. That'll give them a boost. But I just read this on a USA Today article that a 60% of all mobile personal computing devices shipped to schools were Chromebooks. So that's a huge percentage of schools that kind of have to use Chromebooks, at least the for the foreseeable future. So Microsoft kind of can't come in and make that not compatible because then nobody would even be able to use it. But if you look, more and more people are getting into this one-to-one device, you know, realm. It's it's becoming the norm. It's it's slowly con- converting to the norm. Right. So by releasing this Surface Pro by Microsoft, I mean, that's getting them into the game. Before then, they had laptops. Right. Were they really in the game? And then to acquire Flipgrid, if they could go out and acquire one or two more of these pieces and start to make their own LMS, kind of like the Google Classroom or something like that, and make it more branded and and more part of the discussion, I think Microsoft is on to something. Me too. I mean, personally, I'm a Google guy, but you know what? If Microsoft is going to make it a better space for learning, we, we have to honor that. We have to respect that and see what they're about. I mean, especially if they can make the Surface Pro as affordable as a Chromebook. Right. Well, And the competition is always good, too. If Google knows that there's somebody kind of chomping at its heels with this sort of stuff, that just pushes the boundaries for both companies, which means bigger and better stuff for teachers. So Yeah, I, I think the competition between companies is definitely a good thing because instead of driving prices up maybe we could get it more affordable for the educational community which will be better for everybody so let's close it out do you go thumbs up or thumbs down from microsoft buying flipgrid i'm telling you right now i'm giving it two enthusiastic thumbs up i'm gonna go one and a half my only half thumbs up is that it's just a caution for switching her from the Google stuff. But like we talked about, I think we're going to be pretty safe with that. And if there's any teachers out there who haven't used Flipgrid yet, we cannot stress enough how great this is. As we've mentioned many times before in the podcast, go check it out. Sign up for free. It takes about 15 seconds and you can start using it in a few months.
So any teacher knows that over the summertime, even though we're out of school and we don't have to show up at seven o'clock in the morning, Monday through Friday, it's actually a really busy time. I know for uh, Gus and I and, and a lot of teachers, we're both furthering our education in, in graduate school and, and other pursuits like that. A lot of teachers have summer jobs. I'm doing some consulting work for a nearby company uh, that that's uh, like a testing, uh, ETS, educational testing service. So we keep busy. Teachers like to be busy. We're super busy all through the year and it's kind of it's kind of good to keep that going take on some different sort of educational work um, just to keep your mind fresh and it's also just a nice time to sort of brush up on some things and a big part of that is taking advantage of, of a lot of the free PD that goes on over the summertime I know it's really popular for teachers to uh, attend uh, different PD sessions if there's some taking place nearby one of the most exciting things with EdTech however is that there's all sorts of free online educational tech PD that teachers can attend too so we thought we'd do a quick segment and we talked a little bit about this last time, but we found some more. So we thought we'd bring up some other free summer trainings that teachers can attend, starting with one that I think, guys, you're going to be involved with, the EdPuzzle one, right? Yeah, I just completed the EdPuzzle Coach Professional deve- Development. And we'll put a link to this in the show notes, but I love EdPuzzle. To be honest with you, I have not been able to use it. Well, I haven't been able to use it because I don't have my own classroom, right. but I haven't put it into one of my lessons yet. Sure. And the reason was, is I only found out about it during uh, Chris Nassie's House of Ed Tech Final Four Technology March Madness bracket right that's the first time i saw it and i went in there and you know i checked out some of the ones that made it to the elite eight and uh this is one that i i wanted to use so i went on to their site i checked it out i made a free account i did all that good stuff and then i was on twitter which you know me i I wasn't really on social media in the twitter sphere right i don't know i just started that what november i I think i had four likes in the first four months and now i'm a little bit more active and i understand how it works a little bit better and uh, i'm starting to get involved with those ed chats like sat chat hashtag sat chat i love that one saturday morning i wake up have a cup of coffee go sit on my back deck and i'm chatting away with 500 600 educators on saturday morning about various topics and you you grow your personal learning network, your PLN. So, but then someone mentioned something about becoming an Ed Puzzle coach, and I was like, "This is great! It's free professional development, and allows me to get more familiar with the Ed Tech tool." So, I went on to the link that was in Twitter, and it linked me up with this free professional development. And I was like, "I'm in. I'm doing it." So, I sat down and I did the seven modules in like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Oh, nice. And uh, now I'm an Ed Puzzle coach. What does that mean? What does being a coach get? Is that basically just saying that you're trained and you can competently use that program? Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, if I go to a conference and I want to show a lesson that I created and I innovated into uh, using Edpuzzle, now I can put that I'm an Edpuzzle coach there. So I'm I'm competent enough to answer certain questions about the, the program, and I'm also competent enough to give a background of the program and ways that I've used it because so now by doing this free professional development I am now a resource for other people they see that they could ask me questions about it and I could help them basically integrate Edpuzzle and improve their their craft and hopefully improve and engage students through more valuable tech integrated lessons this is a a lot of these things are great too if you're just trying to add stuff to your resume as a teacher uh, if if you're you know a lot of us have done the you can take I think get Google so you, you can be a Google certified educator that's a popular one just take some online I forget how they run it how does the Google do that so I got Google one or level one certified right a year and a half ago I think it's about ready to run out because like I think a, it's good for every two years uh, Google okay. changes a lot so I agree with that and um, I'm actually signed up for level two uh, I have a week to take my test you pay $25 I think for level two I think it's like 10 or 15 for level one yeah once you get those two out done, uh, then there are some others like Google Innovator uh, and Trainer. Those are two that I could see myself doing once I get done with my, yeah. you know, my extra schooling that I'm doing right now. But you just, it's just like some tutorials, right? You kind of click through some things, take a test, and then you have that little stamp to add to yourself. There are a lot of people out there that blog about getting you ready to take these exams, but really it's three hours in front of a computer and you right. have these tasks that you got to do. Okay. And they, they videotape you. So you have to give them permission to videotape you to make sure that you're the one that's actually doing it, oh, I guess. Wow. I There's a that. level of accountability there. <laughs> 
But uh, I know like Alice Keeler, she she uh, writes a lot about some of the different tasks that you need to do. And she gives you some uh, feedback as yeah. to what you could do to prepare for these certifications. I think Shake Up Learning also does it a little bit. So, okay. I mean, there's some blogs out there. I, I bet you Eric Kurtz and Control Alt Achieve he probably does something with that as well. But right. those are some of the ones that a lot of people know about. Uh, there are others out there. But it's just cool to list as much of that stuff after your name on the resume or on your website or your business card or whatever you're doing, um, just to kind of help establish yourself. And I think I think it looks good for, for you as an educator and, and for your school too. Your, your district would love to see as many of those things as possible. Plus, think about growing your, your PLN uh, on Twitter or something like that. I mean, the, one of the things that I look for is to see what you know other people are into i go to sat chat or ditch that textbook ditch chat and you know all that stuff the first thing i do when someone talks is i click on them i see what they're all about and if it's someone that you know i can relate to or has the same interest yeah i want to connect with them they might pass me an idea that i can use in a lesson or maybe i could pass them an idea that they could use and you know that's how we build off of each other create this network that just grows and grows and grows i mean if we have a network of 10 people and we're all google one certified well great we all have the same you know attributes right but now if all of a sudden you get uh ed level two certified you know google level two certified i get uh nearpod certified or ed puzzle coach now we have more to share with one another yeah. And then we can grow from one another. So I think that's a big part of it, too. And I know I just mentioned one that you want to talk about, and that's Nearpod. Yeah. So if you're looking for to add something else after your name there, or if you just want to learn about something else cool this summer in your free time, Nearpod is also that uh, they have a, uh, a webinar and workshop to learn how to get started with some of the uh, Nearpod uh, tools and strategies that's available. Um, Nearpod's a weird one because it does so many things. I've always described it as a learning management system where you create classes, your kids log in. Um, and I think that's probably the still best word for it, but I'll just list quickly some of the stuff that it does in case anybody listening is unfamiliar. Uh, Nearpod is really great for creating interactive lessons. So you have your kids log in and they click through a series of uh, tutorials or videos that you kind of lay out as the teacher creating them. There's a a whole library of already customized, ready to teach interactive lessons that teachers can take advantage of. And you can launch these lessons kind of instantly for your students to view, which is the cool part. Um, One of the things they really push is 100% student participation because part of the lesson itself is requiring every single student to participate. And because it's all electronic, you can keep track of that and manage that. Kind of helps students take ownership over their learning. Uh, The other thing, of course, with all these, you know, the learning management stuff is it collects all that student data and gives it to you in nice, really easy to view format. So you can really make sure that all the students are progressing and, and, and help the ones or build in other strategies to help the ones that, that really need it and aren't progressing at the same rate as everybody else. Uh, so Nearpod has, has is really uh, tons of different tools for teachers. And they are, like I said, they're sponsoring a free uh, webinar or workshop for uh, teachers to learn how to get started with this service. Part of it will also give you the option to look at some of the more advanced things you can do with Nearpod once you get comfortable. I know a lot of times you may have talked about this, but as part of these trainings, they will actually require you before they give you that, that title or to say that you've completed the training, they will require you to actually produce something. And I know the Nearpod one, a part of it will be creating a Nearpod lesson according to uh, whatever their recommended lesson guide is. So that will kind of force you to actually get your hands in there and work with the tool, which is great. I know that can be intimidating, but that's the only way we're going to get comfortable. This also is going to have a teaching component where you can use any of their pre-existing Nearpod lessons to teach uh, 15 or more students over the course of one or more class periods, which is is really cool to kind of walk you through that whole process as well. So if there's any teachers out there looking to make some big changes with their ed tech this coming year, Nearpod's an awesome way to do it. And you can learn about it with this this webinar. So I think we're going to segue into something that we brought up last week, but I just want to throw it out there again, because I think this one is going to be huge. Yeah. I mean, just the people that are presenting there, it's online, it's 100% free, all you have to do is register, and it's 14 days long, I think. Whoa. August 1st to August 14th, the videos you're going to be able to have for another week or two afterwards, it is the hashtag Hive Summit. All right, so the idea is, 
everyone's a worker bee and in education we all work together to make something great all right so if you go to hashtag hive summit on twitter you could google that and it will come up and you can register and it's going to be a whole bunch of presentations by some of the big guys in education and some of the people that you know i've been checking out all summer one that i've probably spent the most time learning from this summer is matt miller and he's the author of ditch that textbook that's his site that's his book he has other ones uh that came out uh ditch that homework there's some other ones dave burgess is also another one he's the pirate guy that i always talk about oh yeah i find him very interesting uh one that came to our school rick wormelli do you remember him yeah a couple I years remember. ago yeah he's he's got some really creative ideas he's a good good listen and uh, uh you know he's fantastic i thought he was like a funny steve martin like person <laughs> in education he looks like steve martin too kind of yeah reminds he, me of he's him. very funny very he's knowledgeable funny. quick-witted guy yeah there are others that are coming to this workshop sarah thomas tara martin the tech rabbi He's an awesome one, too. I, I, I find him hilarious as well. I've seen a couple online uh, okay. interviews with him. He's a very he's a guy that I follow on Twitter. I, and we'll throw some of we'll throw these Twitter uh, handles in our show notes as well. So you could check them out as well as the Hive Summit web address. Did you say this was 14 days? I know we talked about staying busy over the summer, but man, 14 days. Well, it's a it's a long time and there's it's not like 24 hours yeah. a day. Or it's anything. not even, is it eight hours a day videos you can I log in it, anytime? I think it's a decent amount of uh, yeah. presenters and decent amount of topics. But here's the thing, you know, it's open for 14 days. And then after that, you know, that that was the, the ones that they pushed out on a schedule. But then you could go back and revisit them for a right. time period longer, which I think is awesome because you don't need to sit down and look at every one. I mean, if there's something that doesn't pertain to you or doesn't interest you, that's like a kid who doesn't like photosynthesis going to a photosynthesis workshop yeah. i mean what's the point go, go to something that inter er, interests you so you know rick morale i can't say his last name we'll just call him big rick big rick big rick you know he kind of talked to us about standards-based grading and what value homework you know you get out of homework and things like that and that was stuff that was like now becoming popular we have yep. standards based grading going up through our elementary schools probably going to reach our high school soon yep i mean these things he thought about a while ago and to be honest with you some of these topics have have been out but he's he boldly came out and said this will be the way yeah and at first you know i know when i listened to it, i was like this guy is a great salesman and he's a little off his rocker but i mean i've i've been to a workshop or two with him since then and it's it's like i reflect on it and it's coming to life this stuff is coming down the pipes it's coming to life you're slowly start uh, starting to see a trickle down effect because of the chromebooks because of the technology it's becoming more student-centered more collaborative and if you're going to make it more student-centered it has to be about the student. So we're no longer comparing one student to another student. Now we're comparing a student to his former self. Where has he come from? Right. Or she, where has she come from? And that's a big part of this game. So the Hive Summit, go check it out. Whole bunch of presentations, whole bunch of professional development, and it's 100% free. You can't beat it. Free is good. And at home is good. Watch them on your own time. Whatever you are interested in, you can check it out. So we got the Hive Summit. We have the Near Pod, and we have Becoming an Ed Puzzle coach go check him out it's time for the tick battle royale ah! that's right it's time for the tech battle royale this is where nick and i go mano y mano we come up with the best choice at least our opinion of the best choice of the ed tech tools out there depending on the category so without any further ado nick i'm just gonna go ahead and spin this wheel Go for it. The reason why I didn't have you read the categories this week is because I really didn't care. I feel so confident this week that you could tell them it's English. You could tell them that it's a history. You could tell them whatever you want to tell. I have one for every category. Wow. And it's going to it's gonna slay anything that you come up with. Well, we don't really even pay attention to the categories anyway. We change them half the time from episode to episode. So I agree with your decision. Although I will say this, I'm also ready with one, at least one or two options for all of our possibilities. And I'm pretty sure they're better than yours anyways. 
So we're going to take this back to the medieval times when you have people challenging other people till death. And we're going to kind of do the same thing here. Nick and I are standing up in the middle of my basement back to back. And we're going to take three steps. We're going to turn around. And we're, going to, we're going to make some good old medieval time fun for you guys today. All right. So I'm going to come at you for, I guess I'll get it started if you don't mind. I got my, uh, my choice for today's challenge is something called Class Dojo. Class Dojo, just to kick it off and let everybody know how awesome this thing is, you Used in 90% of K through 8 schools in the entire United States. Always free for teachers. You can find it at classdojo.com. It's a really great tool, and it doesn't really, it's kind of good we didn't choose a category this time because Class Dojo, I don't know if it really fits in any ed tech category. Really, it's just about connections and collaboration between teachers, students, and uh, the best part of that to me is school community, the parents as well. Um, some of the things in general that Class Dojo is really good at, creating a really nice positive classroom culture that involves, it makes all the students feel a part of it, but also involves the families at home. Uh, teachers can encourage students uh, based on whatever skill, uh, whatever the thing they're good at, whether it's working hard, being kind. This is just some of the stuff listed on the Class Dojo website. It gives all students a voice and loud the teacher to showcase their own work to the rest of the class and also sharing those moments uh, with the parents at home. It does a lot of uh, helpful things just as far as classroom management, such as making random student groups where you can sort of on the fly select how many students you want in a group and it sort of automatically arranges them. It allows you easy and fun, kind of creative, interesting ways to display activities uh, on the board if there's like certain directions. There's backroom music, sound monitors. I guess some of this fits in with a learning management system category. Um, just to list a few things. Uh, my favorite part of this would probably be, I haven't used it as a high school teacher, but just looking at some of the resources, my favorite part is their classroom. Uh, student digital portfolios look really awesome. Um, they're they're uh, interactive, so when a student makes a digital portfolio, a lot of times it's kind of dry, and it ends up a little bit boring for them, but these things are interactive and really exciting to look at, and you can, as a teacher, choose to share those with the parents. I've mentioned that a couple times. You can almost create uh, it's like you're your the parents of the students in your class it almost they make like a little chat group where you can message back and forth with parents when you want to at your own leisure that includes sharing pictures parents can join that class so anything that's posted in the class parents can see too and just as an interesting side note translates messages into 30 or more languages wow what that, do you got that's a lot of languages that's i mean unless yours can do 31 languages i don't really know how you're going to beat that i'll use google translate and <laughs> go as many as i want touche all right so here's the thing yours sounds like an a la carte day yeah i mean i guess so it's I think the co collaboration is the biggest, that seems to be what Class Dojo pushes the most, is like just really letting everybody know what's happening in the classroom. All right, so I just got a question for you. Yep. Just one question. If you had to say the hardest to integrate out of Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides, which one would you choose? The hardest to integrate with this Class Dojo thing? No, the hardest to integrate uh, in a lesson. Oh, uh, okay. Um, which one do you feel the most uncomfortable because you're probably... Uh, yeah, sure. I guess Google Sheets probably most uncomfortable with. No, we didn't talk about this at all beforehand, did right. we? No, I have no clue where this is going. So I'm just throwing this basically out there because I know you so well. I think I'm walking into something. And I think that you are a lot like other teachers out there, and myself included, sure. saying that uh, Sheets has a lot of functionality that we don't even know how to use. We don't know about, yes. Do, do you know how to put formulas into your cells? I can do formulas. Like all formulas? I know of like six to seven different formulas. All right. So what I'm getting at. <laughs> all right. Where's this I'm going? And I'm going to go at you know, like a car salesman here, business guy, <laughs> and I'm going to say flippity. Right. Flippity is my ec tech tool of choice this week, and it is another a la carte resource for you. Okay. You want flashcards? Flippity has it. You want a quiz show? Flippity has it. Random name picker? You got it. You want to test yourself on your typing skills or you want to make a badge tracker? You can do that. And badges are, you know, they're coming up pretty hot lately, especially with students. They like to level up. They like to be gamified. Let's get some of those game elements in there. You want to take care of your K through eight classrooms? If they're still into spelling words, Flippity has spelling words. I use crossword puzzles in my uh, escape the rooms, digital escape the rooms. It has a maker. Word search, you need something right before the holiday to keep their attention for 10 minutes. You got yourself a word search pretty easy. You want to play bingo as a review game? 
They can make bingo boards and they throw all this into sheets. So you could throw them out using sheets. How many times do you go into a classroom and they're playing hangman? Last uh, five minutes of class. Yeah, we see that. All right. So why not turn in your vocabulary into a hangman game? All right. Just to introduce it to them, see what they know, see what they got, see if they can recognize it. This is my favorite one. Flippity has a progress indicator that goes into Google Sheets. If it's in Google Sheets, it's updating as you update it. Therefore, you have yourself a scoreboard. And this, this tool in itself is amazing because you have a classroom discussion going and you want to keep tabs at who's participating or which teams are doing the best, asking the best questions, flippity progress indicator coming right at you. Younger grades, if you want to play the memory game, they have something for it. You have mix and match. You have Mad Libs. Say an English teacher wants to use Mad Libs kind of as a fun activity to introduce some topic. You got it. Here's another good one. Tournament Bracket Maker. Flippity has it. So me as a science teacher, I go over 12 to 14 scientists every quarter. What if I have 12 to 14 scientists in my bracket and we do something online where we get after I go over two people within that bracket, they get to go vote for which one they thought had the more, I don't know, monumental finding to science, contributed more to science. And then at the end, we have the flippity certificate quiz. So you could easily turn a Google spreadsheet into a quiz to earn a certificate. All right, I'm looking at flippity Dot net right now. I'm, I'm big into the aesthetics of the thing. I think if people are going to buy in, it's got to look good. It's got to look professional. Classroom, class dojo's got all these like weird little green monster things, little ninja headbands, super cool, super classy, super professional. Flippity looks like it was built in 1998 by a college student. I don't know if anybody's going to want to get on here and use this stuff. Look at this thing. My, my thing is, is it's helping do the behind the scenes thing. Yeah. All right. We're creating something into sheets. So you got to make sheets look good. And you're not going to want some cookie cutter template out there. You want to make it good, look good with your own taste. So what they're doing is they're writing the code behind it and throwing it into a Google sheet for you to update. How many languages? You got 30 plus languages? Hey, Google Sheets is part of Google. Google Translate. Right. You can you can do as many languages as you want. Um. Yeah, I mean, we're sort of on different playing fields, but I guess if you tally up like the sheer number of things, I mean, this there's a lot of stuff on this. I got project. a couple of questions for you. All right, what do you got? Well, actually, I'm going to start off by telling you a story. When I, oh, when, boy. When I grew up, I was with my grandfather, sure. and every Sunday we would go to Ponderosa after church. With pon- oh, the restaurant, right? Yeah, yeah Ponderosa, okay. and he yeah, would yeah. get me the salad bar. But the thing is, is his salad bar price was like twelve ninety nine, but I was a kid. Yeah. And mine was only six ninety nine. You're probably wondering what the point of this story is, right? I uh, like most of your stories. Ponderosa was able to service both me and my grandfather. Kind of like Flippity. It has something for all ages. Where yours, Class Dojo, 90% of all schools... K through eight has class dojo. That's well, what are true. we going to do with nine through 12? Are we just going to let them hang in? Right. Yeah. Come class dojo. That's I overlooked that definitely is more, um, for younger grades and you're, you're right. Flippity has a uh, pretty, I mean, every, everything could be addressed here. Plus the badge thing. Badges are, are huge. The badge tracker that Flippity's got would be a pretty cool service. I, I'm just saying that though you don't like the aesthetics of the yeah. site, it's the backdoor channel that makes your sheets something great. I mean, I was just looking for something to pick on here. I, just, I'm, I don't even really, there's so many different things. I'm sure, you know, it is pretty neat and clean looking also. So we may, I may have to give up on Class Dojo for this one and pass it, pass the win over to you for a Flippity for this particular round. I'm going to give Flippity a shout out. Keep making these tools these are pretty awesome let's make sheets be the best google platform tool that we can by using some of these uh flippity uh tournament bracket certificate quiz and all that stuff let's follow flippity on twitter at flippity net i'm gonna take this uh victory speech away and i want to thank you until next time in this tech battle royale flippity took down class dojo both of these are high quality, high functioning, multi-purposeful ed tech tools. And Nick and I both suggest that you go check them out. Typically in a victory speech, we give you some type of quote that we tie in with that day's episode. 
In this episode, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to speak a little bit from the heart, and I'm going to wish every teacher out there a happy, restful, peaceful summer. And I hope that you'll have some downtime where you can just sit under a shade tree with a nice, ice-cold summer drink. And I want you to keep it easy. I want you to keep it breezy. And I want you to get ed teched. Until next time, you could join us on Twitter at WeGotTeched or on our website at www.gottech.com.